your pencils, we are talking about debt. It's Bruce Celery, and this is an issue. Yeah. Oh, oh I love that. Hello. Yeah. To make it all ominous, but it's just, it's a big issue in Canada, and it's Enormous. an issue a lot of us spend a lot of time thinking about. Debt. I, wish, I wish I could be talking about curry and pizza <laughs> and all those fun things they get to talk about, but I know. so let's, let's call it becoming debt free. I like we'll that. We'll look at better. it from a glasses half full perspective, but you're right. I, I mean, I talk about it all manner of topics when it comes to personal finance, yeah. and some people look at me or they'll talk to me and they'll say, Bruce, I can't even hear anything you're saying because I have one thing and it's my credit card debt that's right. it's the one thing so you yeah. can talk about retirement and planning for your dream vacation all you want I have credit card debt yeah I know so and we really do need to it. keep we need to keep coming back to it because it's yeah. a huge issue now some people say oh there's good debt and there's bad debt what do you think of that is that I true? don't love it as a paradigm here's uh -huh. why it's moralizing I don't love good, bad, right, wrong. I love what works and what doesn't work. Like and so too. for some people, there is a time in their life that it works to carry credit card debt, because yeah. that's just what works. So if they think that's bad debt and they're a bad person, that's not so helpful. Second of all, it's confusing. So yeah. let's say a, a house is good debt at a 2% interest rate, that may be the case. Go back to the 80s, go forward to a time when interest rates are not 2%, they're 8%, they're 10%. That suddenly becomes very bad debt when you right. look at it from that perspective. But the third thing is, my fear is that people justify behavior because it's good debt. And mm. I hear this a lot like, well, I'm renovating my kitchen, I've pulled the money out of my, um, out of my mortgage, I've refinanced my house to put a new kitchen, and that's good debt because it's an appreciating asset. Maybe, maybe not, but you can just hear the justification in that that may not serve their long-term financial goals. Plus, does any of that make sense if you never plan to sell your house anyways? Not really. Yeah. Not I really. Mean, what are you really gaining? You want a new kitchen. Yeah. So have a new kitchen. Just have a new kitchen. Yeah, Don't and call make it some anything sacrifices, else. Make some sacrifices other places. Now, the numbers are pretty scary uh, when it comes to debt in Canada. So yes. should we be worried? I'm going to, say, going to sound like a complete uh, equivocator here. Yeah. We should be deeply worried, okay. but not debilitated. Okay. So the numbers are, are really worrying for, for Canadians, and they're worrying for families. That being said, if you worry so much that you're like, ah, I'm, 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 <laughs> and don't do anything, it's not, you know exactly. It's not of, helpful, but you do, it feels overwhelming, So I don't want right? to minimize it and say, it's no big deal, relax, Trudeau's in, smoke a joint, whatever. It's not that. <laughs> talking about that <laughs> we need to worry we need a plan we need to get started okay so you need a plan but do not be debilitated I want to know how you start yeah then. you write it down okay you write it down first of all it gets out of your head right because so much of our worry and we wake up in the middle of the night with these thoughts even just writing it down gets it out of our head both practically and metaphorically so you want to write down the lender the amount the interest rate, the due date, the minimum payment. Okay. It's just gonna be on a piece of paper. Just write it down, get it out of your head. You'll total it. You may need to have something that's uh, available for medicinal purposes after you do that, but at <laughs> least it is out of your head. Right, okay, and then do you start to write a plan? Yeah, do you, you do. So it, I have this thing called the ABC method of cash flow. Okay. Analyze, brainstorm, change. Love Analyze it. what's coming in and what's going out. And I'm talking simple. It's not like a okay. spreadsheet with macros. It's here's my salary, here's my mortgage, here's what I spent. Yeah. Brainstorm ways you could change that. How could I increase income or cut spending? And then commit to two or three. Not ten, not living the monastic lifestyle of someone who has no joy in life, yeah. but a couple of things that are going to make the biggest difference. Here's what a plan sounds like, and you can tell that people have a credit card problem but no plan if they can't articulate it. Yeah. Here's my objective. Eliminate credit card debt in 12 months. Right. My goal, how do I measure that? $5,000 to zero in 12 months. That's a very ambitious target. Yeah. But then you need the actions. Like, what am I going to do? I'm going to work a couple of overtime shifts. I'm going to stop eating out. I'm going to sell my car. What, like, what are the things that you're actually going to do? Because otherwise, and we've talked about this before, otherwise you have a good intention. Yeah. You have a nice idea. You have a let's do lunch one day, someday, maybe. Mm -hmm. Unicorns, rainbows, and That's George right. Clooney's going to be your husband. Gold. Yeah. 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 It's not going to happen. It's not happening. You need a plan. Yeah. What I like about what you said is that you don't have to sit. I think what, what always stops me is I've got to sit down and calculate every dime I've spent over the past three months. Oh! 
Oh, I don't want to yeah, do that. I would that. rather eat this entire flower arrangement <laughs> than track anything. <laughs> yeah, like put the, <laughs> I just bought a pack of gum. Better write that in the ledger. Like oh, it just yeah. feels like. Like somehow at the gates of heaven, they're going to say, how much do you spend on gum in your lifetime? Exactly. There's no virtue to that. It doesn't have to be that specific. It has to be a general what's coming in, what's yeah. going out, and yeah. it doesn't have to be so specific. Um, how do you choose what to pay down first then? Well, here's the great question, math or mindset. And mm -hmm. you have to know yourself a little bit because you've looked at that piece of paper, you've written it all down. You're going to have one, let's say it's a credit card. It's a store card. It's got 25% interest rate. So from a math standpoint, that card should go first. So right. some people that really works. Other people need the mindset of the psychological boost of I eliminated a card. Yes. So that method, which is different, is low balance. So you've got okay. a card with $2,000 and a card with $100 on it. Mm -hmm. Even though that $100 card has the lowest rate, you pay it off first. Got it. Because you're like, laka, 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 mm -hmm. paid off the card. Yeah. <laughs> that's so exactly that's the, the dance psychological I do. Win. Do you do that dance? Yeah. Well, there's something so motivating about a check mark yeah. or about crossing something off the list. Yeah. I love that feeling. Because you want to be focused not on the gap right. in which you will always fail, almost always fail. Mm -hmm. You want to focus on progress. That's right. What? How did I progress even if it's an inch? How did I progress today? It's more motivating, yeah. I find. Yeah. And the pitfalls of dealing oh, with geez. that. Oh, geez. Number one, not addressing consequences. Mm -hmm. And this is grounded in human psychology. We have so much trouble connecting our behavior today with a consequence in the future. Yeah. So how does that credit card debt link to other things that you want in your life? Uh, not having a plan, which we've talked about, getting overwhelmed, which yes. is really, really, really easy. But the last one, and you have to take me with a grain of salt on this one because I don't want to sound um, judgy judgerson. Yeah. Playing a victim. Playing oh, a victim okay. is a huge pitfall because it has you, if you say, I'm a victim to my circumstances, it has you avoid taking responsibility for the debt. Yeah. And that's that's not helpful. Not to say that the circumstances don't exist, but being a victim isn't helpful. Yeah, you just got to fix it. Yeah. Regardless of how you got yeah. there. Well, really good advice uh, and really good magazine. Everyone's going to be taking home a November issue of Money Sense magazine after the show today. So enjoy that.